Now let's continue this. We have observed in case of D4, there are two cases. In the first case I have already explained you, that is pairing energy is less than delta naught because it is strong field ligand, this gap is more. Right? So electrons are paired up and number of unpaired electrons rank is 2. So its magnetic behavior is according to two unpaired electrons. Right? In this case, pairing energy is greater than delta naught because this gap is very less. So electron can go to EG. And as a result, number of unpaired electrons in this case are 2. So having number of electrons, sorry, uh, it will be 4 in this case. Number of unpaired electrons are 4. Fine. So that means if this is the case of here you can say it is a high spin. Fine. And here it is a low spin complex. Fine. So it all depends. Uh, the nature of the ligand and other factor which influence the value of delta G, those can decide here whether this type of arrangement will be there or this type of arrangement, right? So it depends on the factor that uh, pairing energy is more or less than splitting energy and vice versa, fine? So let me have the another arrangement here that is the arrangement of D5 now. So D5 case, in case of D5 also, you have here T2G, EG, weak field, small gap, delta naught, fine, T2G and EG set of orbitals, fine, here again, 5 <coughs> electrons are to be filled, 1, 2, 3, fine. Gap is more, delta is very high as compared to the energy required to pair the electrons, so they will pair. Fine. So number of unpaired electrons left is only one in this case. Fine. But here, as delta is very less as compared to the pairing energy, so therefore, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Right. So here number of unpaired electrons are 5, that means it's highly paramagnetic in nature, number of unpaired electrons is only 1, that means it's a very low spin, weakly paramagnetic case, fine. So you can see how the electronic arrangement is done. Next we have is a case of uh, D6. In D6 you see 1, 2, 3 will have the same pattern. Then, if this is the case, then 4, 5 and 6 will come here. Fine. As a result, number of unpaired electron is 0 in this case. This complex is diamagnetic. Fine. And here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right. Now, after 5, the 6th electron here, obviously, all are half filled. So, 6 electron has to pair up. So, it is better to pair it up in a orbital of lesser energy. That will it will pair in T to G. So overall unpaired electron left will be 4. So this is how magnetic behavior will be changed depending upon delta. Fine. Let's observe for D7. For D7. For D7, for the first case strong field more delta 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? Now there is no option, 7th electron has to go here. Fine. So unpaired electron in this case will be 1. Right? So it will be a weakly paramagnetic that is a low spin complex. Fine. Here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 will pair here. Fine. So unpaired electron will be uh, 3 here. So you say there both the complexes will have a different magnetic moment values, fine. So take different magnetic behavior. Let's observe the case of uh, D8 here, fine. So uh, very, very important case. For D8, see, first case, these condition, under these condition will observe the situation, fine. In this case, 1, 2, 3 electron, 4, 5, 6, 7, obviously 8. So number of unpaired electrons are 2 in this case. Right? Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Though the way of filling is different but ultimately you get the same arrangement here. Here also number of unpaired electron is 2. So that means for D case also, D8 case, 
everything is fixed. Fine? Right? That means whatever is the do not depend upon nature of the or other factors. Fine? Right? Whatever is the delta, delta is low, delta is high, it doesn't. It is independent of delta here, right? Whatever is the case, it have a fixed arrangement, fixed set of orbitals, right? Which are half filled or fully filled. So overall, same magnetic moment, whatever is the case. Now let me take D9 case. For D9, you see here, this is 8. Now, 9th electron definitely will pair here. There is no space here. Unpaired electron left is 1, right? So this is arrangement of 8, now the 9th electron will definitely pair here, fine, unpaired electron is 1. So this is again the parallel case as compared to uh, D8. So here again both arrangements are same, there is no change in the arrangement, whatever is the link, fine. Now the last case D10, it is very simple now, in D10 definitely all will be fully filled, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 like that in this case, but in this case 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The way is different, but ultimate arrangement is same. In both these cases, I have no unpaired electrons, so both these cases will be diamagnetic. Right? So D1, configuration of any metal ion in the complex, whatever is the ligand, it will always be diamagnetic in nature. Right? So this is how Crystal field splitting explains first property that is magnetic behavior of the complexes. Now, next I will explain about the explanation given by CFT and color of complexes. So it is very simple now. In the previous theories like VBT, all the 5D orbitals are assumed to have same energy that is degenerate in complex also fine but this theory says that the in complex matter d orbitals are not degenerate they are having splitting energy i'll just take one example here complex of titanium for example in its plus 3 oxidation state fine now in plus 3 titanium configuration titanium plus 3 is argon 3d1 now it is a case of octahedral so splitting will be like this here it is d2g and here it is EG set of orbitals. Fine? Okay. Now, definitely it is a D1 case where electron is here. So, why it is colored? Because from Vibigil, from the visible region, it absorbs certain energy for excitation to take place. So, one electron can go from T to G to EG. Depending upon this gap, that much energy will be absorbed and accordingly that complementary color will appear. Here, we have this is T2G, EG, after excitation it will go to EG. So, we know the concept of color that if electron excitation is possible in any substance, by absorbing energy from visible region it will appear colored. Fine? So, this is the explanation for color. Now, very important to understand here, it's very simple, any arrangement, in any arrangement, if excitation from lower T to G to E G takes place, all those arrangements, all those complexes will be colored. For example, in D1, possibility is there. In D2, up to up to D9, you will see, I have drawn, in all these cases, uh, whether it is a, a case of low spin or it's a case of high spin complex, that means whether the ligand is a strong field or the ligand is weak field, doesn't matter. Fine. All these cases of the metal ion will be definitely colored. But there are two cases in which there will be no excitation possible that is D0 and D10 configuration. For example,